Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, a happy Wednesday to you all. Happy midweek to you all. Hopefully your weeks are going brilliantly. Or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, hope you're having a great day nonetheless. Today is a very exciting day because we get to check out yet another one of the channel favorites in the realm of the K-Band because one, we are back with brand new music from out of nowhere off the top rope. One, we are back and I'm so un explainably inexplainably excited by that fact september's already been a great month for the k-band um we started the month with day six we had a qwer pre-release drop we have the one we single today we have Xenary heroes next week bro the k-band world is being very well fed indeed albeit at the cost of losing mr guango from lucy due to military service but we move anyways. Um, One Wii's brand new drop. I love when One Wii just surprises us with little singles. Like this got announced at some point, I think, over the course of the past two weeks. And I remember coming across it all of a sudden thinking, oh, One Wii drop. And then all, all the K-bands came out with brand new music. And it was like, as the big K-band aficionado, oh, I'm so living for it. Like, Planet Nine Isotropy still gets plays on my phone. Geek's solo album still gets plays on my phone. Still go back and listen to, like, still... Oh, is this still here or still... Yeah, still here, right? The single after Universe. Oh, what a time. But, you know what? Enough waffling. We have to get through the new music. So, roll intro one time. just realized that k-band opening can really be updated now considering three out of the first four artists had new comebacks and i just updated it for lucy's villain release too so very cool good stuff good stuff now one we won't be bask basking in darkness anymore hopefully hopefully we can get a nice clip for the intro track but let's have some fun shall we volume up Oh, looks like we are gonna have some fun, aren't we? Oh, and we've got everyone involved here early. I love you. It's kind of refreshing to hear Yonghoon on a non-ballad track for the once, like, properly. So I feel like this is an entirely different Yonghoon we're listening to now. Oh, I don't know, the hi-hats back there. Oh yeah, it's a banger, everybody. Yeah, it does feel like this is an entirely different side of Yonghoon we haven't come across in a hot minute. song kind of flip-flops between halftime and double time a lot. Nice long drawn out re-entry for chorus too. And then letting Dong Yong take lead on chorus two as well. Oh straight into the bridge. Oh, it's so low. It's so low. Oh, 
Good boy! Seeing him play a Les Paul feels so foreign for some reason. I'm so used to the, um, you know, the purple guitar. This song is so hard. Bro, that went so hard. Are you kidding me? One, we really said, hey, it might not be proper summer release season anymore, but we're still going to give you a banger anyways. Wow. Here's the thing. For me, one, we have always been the king of the ballad. Like, I, whenever I want a nice, sappy band ballad to go to one we have always been that group for me with like universe still here what was their most recent title track that they did like off of their off of isotropy playing in that isotropy beautiful ashes i think but you get my boy they know how to do a really sappy ballad really well but i'm really liking that we're getting kind of intense one we like more high energy crunchy one we recently you know including during three we when we got salty boy with Duke and Dong Myung on the track like oh there's grit and there's energy behind this and I love it and I, I know I kept harping on about him earlier but Yong Hoon on a track like this just feels so different to me in the best way possible because I feel like I'm it's like untapping this side of Yong Hoon's vocals that I've never listened to before, or I've never really taken in before. Because one of my favorite parts about the One We Ballad is Young Un's like really caramelly thick voice. Because it feels so like he's got a very I, I don't know if round makes it any easier to understand, but his voice on that rich ballad, especially when he gets that soft rich vocals like on the course of still here. Nava. No, no, no. Like, that is one of the prettiest vocal moments from a K band ballad I've come across. And it's so him, you know what I mean? But when you get a song like Off Road, where it just completely changes that kind of pre existing notion I had about his voice, is mind blowing to me. And then, of course, you have Mr. Dong Myung, who, like, on the aforementioned Salty Boy, we've gotten high energy stuff before. Same with Giyuk. I mean, we've had two solo albums of his where he's just kind of popped off and done his own thing. And I'm really glad that we are getting more vocal Giyuk on tracks now. Especially, I feel like that, like, the rename, like, coming off of Kia and going to Giyuk, kind of unlocked a different... It's like he prestiged in Call of Duty. He made it to different levels with the rename. Or the rebrand with the solo release. And I'm re it's really nice to see that kind of evolution of formerly Kia. I still remember. My first kind of dose of Kia that I ever got was at the end of Purple Kisses Zombie. When he just made a cameo out of nowhere at the end of the AMV. Good times, good times. But let's talk about the song one time because we're going to listen to it again. Immediately, off rip, we're not shying away from the fact that, yeah, we're gonna turn up the intensity, we're gonna turn up the energy a little bit. That's starting off with Mr. Yomo, of course. The fact that we're swapping vocals early, early, and very quickly, too. I don't usually talk about how people look, but all the beauty shots of Harin in this MV are OD. They are a lot to take in. But I mentioned this, I think, when we covered Geek's solo projects with like Rise Wave and stuff, uh, that previous era. But with 
you know, two vocalists, two very different vocalists in Dong Yong and Yong Hoon with very identifiable vocals, having Gyu come in and be so stylistically different because he approaches oftentimes with a lot of focus on rhythm kind of stuff. He like he is as close as you're gonna get to a main rapper in the script, right? But he also isn't afraid of using the digital production stuff in his vocals as well. But it never feels like it's overdoing it for me. You know what I mean? Like there's I don't I'm not usually the biggest fan of like digital work on vocals because I think it takes away from the natural charm of it. But with Giuk, I've almost come to kind of expect it from him at this point. Like we've had two albums from him, like on his own some. And both of them, you know, had a good amount of vocal, digital vocal work going on throughout the entire, uh, all, throughout the entire album. But never once did I feel like it was overwhelmingly, like, too much digital work. And I'm kind of glad that that's continued on into the group one-way stuff as well. Because now it's kind of been established, like, Giuk is kind of like this digital third vocalist in a sense. Even though we do get his natural vocals in as well. It's like, Geek singing, I almost expect that to happen, even if it's on a group one week track. I find that really interesting to me. This pacing thing. Half time, double time, half time, double time. In fact, it kind of like treads that line between the two. And this false start for the chorus. Harin and Gyuk on this initial chorus release is playing such an important part in the song. Because you know, the song is ridiculously intense leading up to this, right? The fact that the entire bottom end of the song has dropped out all of a sudden, and the only really musical element apart from the main melody is... I'm pretty sure it's one guitar, like Kang Hyun's one guitar. Maybe there's a Yong Hoon guitar and maybe there's a Dong Myung guitar in there that's really far back in the mix. But the essence of speed and intensity has suddenly gone away. The only thing that's keeping the song going right now, in terms of rhythm, is Harin, with that with the hi-hat. And then we're going to slowly bring the bottom end of the song in, incorporating the kicks from Harin's kit, as well as Gyuk on bass. And the way the chorus starts, you know, this is by definition an anti-drop, technically, or a, f or a false anti-drop, because we get the full release later. The fact that it doesn't feel like it completely drops out because Harin is still there is so important and is really the point, the key point of the drummer is to ma maintain the foundation of the song no matter what happens. And drummers are always so slept on, so shout out Harin, man. Shout out Harin. Let's bring in the bottom end now. And now we've got that full hit. And then immediate transition into verse 2 with Gyuk taking lead. Now the order is completely different, the style is completely different. It just. We're gonna keep her rolling. No time for breaks. No, no time for breaks. And I'm kind of glad because that chorus gives a really nice injection of energy. After that false drop, injection of energy, we are running now. And we're gonna run that high out into verse two. Kind of rinse and repeat again. And I just want an excuse to listen to the bridge and the guitar solo again. Because immediately, we don't get the post course, right? We're going straight into the bridge, but we're retaining that intensity now. That is such a crunchy low bass part. Goodness. 
And again, digital, digitally filtered vocals, but it never feels like it's overdoing it. I love just the control that Giyuk has and like the production team has on his vocals. Also, Kanye, do your thing, man. On a Les Paul of all things, dude, that's crazy. I know it's probably for the MV, but still. Not seeing the purple guitarist blow my mind. And then the halftime restart? Let the adrenaline of the guitar solo kind of wear off before we bring the song back in fully. Big brain. Big brain composition right there. Ooh. You think I had a lot of fun with that? Because I had a lot of fun with that. Oh, man. I wonder, though, is this is this one of those one-track, one-we singles? Or do we have hidden B-sides on this? Off-road. <gasps> we have B-sides! Oh, fuck yes! We've got two B-sides to check out. Which means I get an album to listen to. Hell to the yes. Um, I didn't know that was going to be. A th I thought it was going to be like still here and just we just get you know one song. But wow, we get B sides. Oh, this is this is the best day. This is the best day. Oh, I'm so excited to jump into it because you bet your ass we're going to jump into it. So I'm going to wrap it up here before I continue to waffle on for too much longer. Thank you all for watching along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. And Lord knows I enjoyed that one a lot. But one last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be, you know, checking in with your friends and family, holding, in the, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day to day. And know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.